So once again, I'm headed down the California coast, ready to do a Positive Coaching Alliance workshop for the Encinitas Express Soccer League. A great organization. It's a three-year partner for PCA. Uh, get to talk to uh, their recreational coaches this, this evening. And one of the things we talk about is developing a coaching philosophy. And it made me think back to when I was in college and I took basketball theory three times while I was in college because every time they had a new assistant coach that uh, came in to coach at Cal Poly Pomona, uh, I wanted to learn from somebody different, so I took the class again. And the first year I was with Alan Van Winkle, he was a great assistant coach. I wore plaid pants every day. It was in the 70s. It was wild. He became the head coach at Southern Illinois after that. And then we had Andy Stoglin, who was actually a player at Texas Western back in the glory days when they had the first team that had five black starters in the NC2A. Uh, he was in that era. Um, he went on to be an assistant coach at Arkansas when they were really good and a head coach at a couple other places. After that, I had Dave Bullwinkle, who became a great mentor and friend, uh, left Cal Poly as an assistant, became an assistant coach at U University of Oregon, came back as the head coach at Cal Poly, and I worked his camps for a number of years and learned so much from Dave uh, about uh, coaching and about recruiting and about building cultures, and he became a motivational speaker afterwards. He operates coach and on and off the court. Uh, so he goes out and does team building and motivational speaking. And so we kind of do the same thing. And uh, Dave was really special in my life. And I think it was during his class that uh, I did this coaching philosophy paper. And the conclusion went something like, um, if a coach cares about his players on and off the floor, proves that he's knowledgeable, and works as hard as he expects them to, then the players will try to be great teammates, listen and try to learn, and give their best effort, or something like that. It was a long, long time ago. So then, you learn a lot, you coach a lot, and you develop all of this stuff, and you keep it in a three-ring binder, and somehow I get tricked into thinking that that three ring binder was my philosophy. So every time I would coach with other coaches or I'd have assistant coaches, I'd drop that big heavy three ring binder on their desk and I'd say, you know, this is our philosophy, teach it. And, um, and there was a whole lot of stuff and it was pretty thorough, but there was a lot of stuff. So fast forward a whole bunch of years and I'm the head coach at Bishop Almont High School, and we're having a pretty good season. We went on kind of a winning streak, and guys were feeling pretty good about themselves. And we were in the middle of a really bad practice. It was lifeless and listless, and maybe it was mid-afternoon, and that was the problem. Uh, but it was a bad practice. And I remember going on a little mini tirade during practice, and... Uh, and I was just, you know, hollering at the guys about playing like you just you just don't care. You know, if you would just think about what you're doing, you're not even trying out there. And it went on and on and on. And after practice, went up into the coach's office and sat down and slumped into my chair a little bit. And started to think back to the practice and the tirade that I just had, what I had just said. And I realized that what I just said was the same thing that I wrote as a conclusion to my paper so many years earlier. You know, we were playing like we didn't care. And they weren't really thinking. And they sure weren't trying and giving their best effort. And uh, it made me realize that I got lost in all of the stuff. You know, all of the X's and O's and all of the handouts and all of that. All those things that don't really matter. And that's where I came back to that philosophy um, that began to resonate with me that uh, the really the three things that were most important as the kids care think and try and uh, 
make their best effort to do those three things to their greatest extent, not only on our team, but in the rest of their lives too. So care, think, and try kind of became the mantra. And it's kind of caught on a little bit. I appreciate guys like Clarence Gaines out there, who's an assistant coach and a scout for the New York Knicks and was with the Chicago Bulls. I have such respect for Clarence, and he uses that a lot now and and, uh, really makes me humble uh, and proud that something that I wrote and said uh, resonates so much with a guy like that. Um, Used it at a workshop uh, up in Santa Barbara and a local winery up there had one of their employees at the workshop and he adopted it and put it on his internal uh, memos. You gotta care, think and try, care about your customers, think about what you're doing, try your best. So, you know, it means a lot of things to a lot of people. But most importantly, you know, at that particular time, it was what I thought we needed to do to become uh, a really good, uh, really good basketball team. And so that's where uh, that philosophy came from and I guess I would finish by you know talking about what philosophy really is and a lot of us think it's all that stuff and it gets mixed up with a mission statement or a vision statement Um, and I was on a plane one day and and I read uh, an article from the Harvard Business Review called the eight word mantra or the eight word philosophy and uh not because I read the Harvard Business Re- Review regularly, but it was a tweet that was retweeted, so it directed me there. And and it, the, the whole thing was really, if your philosophy can't be broken down into something simple and something that's stated in eight words, then people aren't going to be able to repeat your philosophy and really buy into it. So that was kind of where I started to really fine-tune this uh care, think, and try to the greatest extent possible to be successful uh, idea. Uh, And uh, like has been said recently, of those three, uh, I probably think that the most important is to care. Because if you don't care and care deeply about what it is that you're doing, uh, you're certainly not going to think about what you need to do or how it affects others. Uh, And you're not going to give a very good effort and try your best either. So caring is most important. I think I mentioned that in a previous Baseline Drive. I hope you enjoyed this one and the new uh, method of filming. I think uh, more of the scenery and less of me is always a good thing. Uh, So we're going to try to do it this way in the future. And uh, as always, um, you know, try to be more than more than human. Be superhuman. Be great. Coach Loke out.